So this is the Sanderson building. This is the main engineering building where the head of school is sitting. It also facilitates some laboratories, both research and teaching laboratories, as well as uh, teaching classrooms. This one here is a large teaching classroom. And this is connected uh, to the next building where we are going to. Many of our buildings are connected uh, to a bridge. And uh, this building, that will be the next one, is the so-called Hudson Bay building. So you can see here the bridge. And the connected Hudson Bay building. I cannot go inside the buildings now because of the lockdown. And the Hudson Bay building houses many classrooms. This one is the outside of the largest classroom that can host more than 200 people. Now we can see the Roger Lamb building that uh, belongs to the School of Biology. It's uh, this one on the left, the white building, and the white taller building is also the School of Biology, it's the Swan building. Right here on the right, you can Again, uh, see the Hudson Bear building with uh, some of the classrooms. And here we have the Faraday building that is also the School of Engineering buildings. And they uh, house a lot of offices and also the bioengineering research laboratories. And this is the Arik building. Basically, these buildings are uh, merged together, so it's very easy to go between them, even in bad weather. And we are refurbishing right now the bioengineering laboratories. That's why you can see the scaffolds here. So again, this one is the main building for biology. And we are also refurbishing this building next to it which will be a tall tower related to the School of Biology. As we walk further, you can see the James Clark Maxwell building right in front of us. It's the biggest building of the King's buildings and it houses the School of Physics and the School of Mathematics. But before we go and show the James Clark Maxwell building, I want to show more of the engineering buildings that are here on the right side. So this is the black of the Fleming Jenkins building, where we also have a lot of uh, laboratories. And this is the Alexandra Graham, Graham Bell and the William Rankin buildings. They are built together, where we have the uh, digital communication and uh, environmental sciences research going on. So this one is the Bell building and the further side is the Willem Rankin building where you can see the solar panels on the side of the building. So in the Bell building uh, we have a lot of research ongoing with uh, digital infrastructure, with signal processing and also this is where the Li-Fi, uh, when uh, basically light is used to transmit uh, internet was invented. While here we are doing a lot of research based on uh, water quality and also some of my colleagues who are working for fire safety engineering are sitting here. You can see that uh, this 
house is also the center for fire safety engineering. And as we go, you can see here the fire laboratories and a small building for offices for people in fire science. And also you can see the uh, Sanderson Buildings Tower in the center. And as we go further, right next to Sanderson Building and the fire laboratories, we have the Mary Brook Building, which you can see here. It's this grey building that looks quite modern. And you can again see the starting point with the Sanderson building. So as we go further, we have uh, some green space with a little forest and some benches where students can spend their lunch time. And also we have the central library here. So normally the grass is cut, but now because of the lockdown, these services are suspended. So that's why the grass is so high here. So this one is the King's Buildings Library. This is where uh, there, is, there are many student uh, study spaces. And also we have a small cafeteria in the bottom. And we are also building some new classrooms here right next to the library that should be ready in a year or two. So here you can see the library. And now we have arrived to the main entrance of the James Clark Maxwell building that houses physics. Before I just want to show you that uh, in between these buildings, the library and the James Clark Maxwell, we have some nice uh, green space, again with some benches, where students can go, relax, eat their lunches. And also you can see the chemistry building in, next to the library, where the School of Chemistry houses. So the Maxwell building might be famous for some of you, not just because it's named after the famous physicist James Clerk Maxwell, but also because it houses the office of uh, Professor Peter Higgs. You might heard of the Higgs boson. He is our Nobel laureate uh, professor and his office is uh, somewhere in this building. So you can see here the main entrance of the Maxwell building and this also actually houses uh, some of the engineering academics and also I myself sometimes uh, teach in the teaching classrooms of the Maxwell building. So now we are going Further, we will see the Peter Wilson building where my laboratories are. So the Peter Wilson building doesn't belong to the School of Engineering, but the school is uh, renting the laboratories from an agricultural college that owns the building. So this is where my laboratories are and also the School of Biology is renting a floor in this building. So it's a very mixed building. And next to it is the Rogerland building, which is also belonging to the School of Biology. This is where the cell culture work is done mainly for the School of Biology. So this one is a relatively small two-floor building. And next to it is the so-called SMC, the Scottish Microelectronics Centre, where 
we have ISO 10 class clean rooms and we do a lot of microelectronics work. And you can see here on the left the entrance of the Peter Wilson building. And this is the entrance of the Rogerland building and you can see here the cafeteria behind these glasses. So right across is the SMC I mentioned before and the lowest part is where the clean rooms are while the taller part houses industry and offices of academics. And going further down this road, you can see a large building without windows. This is the so-called flowway building, where we have the largest non-rectangular water tank that is used for research in the world. And on the side you can see the hills. So Edinburgh is a very hilly city and you can see that uh, these actually are used as, golf, as a golf course just in between the university and the big hills. So this is the flowway building. Here we have the crew building that belongs to the School of Geosciences. And it's uh, also mainly used for teaching. It has a lot of uh, classrooms. On the other side, we have the back of the School of Chemistry. And on the left side, we have the so-called Murchison House. The Murchison House uh, hosts some uh, study spaces for students, but it is also hosting some companies, including Huawei, and it is also where the Edinburgh innovation that is trying to uh, help academics with startup companies is housed. So this building was recently furbished and it has lots of modern spaces and also it has a very nice cafeteria. So this is the Murchison house here. And this is the main bus stop. Uh, this bus connects the campus with the center of the city. On the left side here, there is a golden building. It's a private nursery for small children. While on the right, you can see the main entrance of the School of Chemistry. So this is the nursery. And this is the main entrance of the School of Chemistry. So the School of Chemistry is restricted in only one building. So it houses the teaching facilities, the research labs, as well as the offices and some student spaces. So you can see the magnificent entrance. And on the other side, you can see a statue with uh, someone putting a cone on top of it. Next to the School of Chemistry, we can find the School of Geosciences. So this is the main building for the School of Geosciences and it's called the Grant Institute. It's also full with uh, research laboratories, offices and teaching facilities, like teaching classrooms. A 
geology is world famous from the University of Edinburgh and uh, there are a lot of really nice research outcomes coming here and you can see on the top that this building was made in 1931 so it's quite old okay and the building after the geosciences is the zoology building which actually nowadays is just part of the school of biology but it has a lot of animal related uh, research and it also houses offices research facilities like laboratories and teaching laboratories you can probably see through the windows that uh, there is a big research and teaching laboratory here so if i go closer probably you can see here some of the laboratories from the reflection and here is the main entrance of the school of uh, biology zoologist building So this is the main entrance of the zoology, which is one of the oldest buildings here on campus. This building was built in 1928, as you can see. And if I come back, you can see that the main road is here. And also this corner of the campus is where many students take photographs with uh, this university seal that is here 